single maneuver known by many names, the stall has played a critical role in surfing's progression. From snaps to arm bars to side slips, what was conceived as a means to an end has evolved to a point where form and function are interchangeable. In this installation of Field Notes, we explore the evolution of the stall. To slow down in the tube is just, you know, the best. You gotta stay there and get spit out. In the beginning, like in 61 or so, uh, I started seeing kick stalls. The first one was like Phil Edwards. He'd kick stall and then drop it and then just get covered up in the hook. After that, I see Mickey Dora, you know, kicking the board up, maybe hitting somebody, you know, getting them out of the way. The first guy I kind of saw really stalling was Dan K. Aloha. He was the first guy to really do what is the modern day, like, drag and pump. And so he would stall on the takeoff at back door and be stalling but pumping. So then he would be setting up to get as deep as he could in the barrel. Johnny Boy Gomes was right there too, but he kind of took it to the next level where that was really like Hawaiian power surfing. And he would do the craziest like backside snap in the hook to grab his rail and get barreled. The first guy I saw really grab a rail was John Peck at Pipeline and pull in. And so the next year I was on it. I learned from those guys. They were my mentors. My recollection beyond that is seeing my dad in 1965, just on film. I'd pull my fin out and I'd come out fin first. Grabbing his rail and then kind of stalling but side slipping on a longboard. I just remember watching like a few of my uncles and, and most of the time my dad. He, he would like go on these waves. The wave would be like doing its pretty thing. And a lot of people would just take off and pull into the barrel. But I noticed they'd take off and like come off the like come off the bottom and go whoa and like and then let the thing go, you know. And I just remember I was a kid like whoa like and so so I'd go out on my skateboard on my street and like go down the road, you know. And then I'd see like my little bushes and I'd always do the <laughs> like I try to like <laughs> and then let it like and then act like I'm like oh yeah <laughs> and then let roll out through the barrel, you know. Because my dad seen me try one one time. So he's like, stand on your tail and try that. But I just remember my board's like, woo, and then went like that. I'm like, and I rode. I was like, oh, stall. As far as modern day, like grab your rail backside surfing, it would have been Marvin Foster. And he was the one who really mastered the technique of surfing backdoor backside and grabbing your rail and, and getting under it and getting into that like pig dog stance and then using your hand to stall and then coming out of the barrel. And now what we see people do is just crazy, like as we saw Gabriel Mendina do like an air to backwards and then ride backwards for however long and then come back to forward and be right in the pocket. You could almost say like Medina, that was a stall technique. So mind blowing and the control that the kids have is so much different than what people in the earlier eras had in surfing. Pipeline, you know, Jamie O, all the kids, man, they're just so radical. They take off underneath the hook and then drag their body to slow down so they can stay there. Another thing is too, is like being young and watching my brother surf, he was like the first person to really stall to do an air and like slowing down and then waiting for the section and then doing like one or two pumps and then blasting instead of just racing down the line and hitting it. So. The stall has a lot to do with aerial surfing as well, not just barrels. And that's to be able to utilize the maximum power of the wave and wait for it instead of racing past it and then just hitting the in section. Now we stall to do the biggest air, you know, or you try to, if you want to hit the air right, you almost sometimes got to stall. And you, I love seeing like someone take off doing like a super weird, funny stall, whether it's a long or something like woof, or something like just a line or something where you stall, but you read the wave so perfect where you just stall, but then you come whooping. It's just a whole new style of surfing, the way that the kids 
how late they drop and the way they stall for the barrel and sit in the barrel and lay on the foam ball and then just come out, you know, so. You know, also Mason, and what you see Mason do is just very unique, different kinds of stalls. And it's maybe not to get so deep, but it's just to show control and then to be different as well. And seems like nowadays a lot more people have really good like stalling style, whether it's backside or front side. I see a lot of good, a lot of good stalls, you know, even some stuff where I'm like, whoa, I might even try that. Or, or I might not even think it, but all of a sudden I'm on the wave and I'm trying it. And I'm like, oh, that Grom got me, freaking, that was fun. I like watching Baron Mamiya. He has like a cool morphing style, you know, like with the barrel. It's fun to think about all the different ways that you can like stall front side and back side. Yeah, it's like, or I love just like getting low and just being super centered and turning into like trying to be a little missile. And then it's fun because backside you could actually, it's a, I don't know if it's called cheating or what, but you could like play with where you want. You could put your foot up more or like you could, it's just so fun backside. You know, you gotta experiment. The waves sort of teach you how to ride it, the evolution of it. Former professional surfer, punk musician, and more recently, pro whisperer, Leandro Grillo Dora is an apparent Midas of modern surfing. For this week's Human Profile, we caught up with the world title winning surf coach and spiritual mentor, along with a few of his current disciples who are spending the season on the North Shore. I personally don't know anything about Leandro, but I heard about him working with Jack at the Barra Contest and seeing his success ever since. Uh, so I'm excited to learn a little bit more about Leandro. Sometimes the guys like, I'm a king here, you know? You surf and come back and, oh, the king. In Hawaii, you another one. You're not the king, man. You another surfer. <laughs> this is, is good. Meu nome é Leandro Dora. Tenho 52 anos. Nasci numa cidade chamada Cascavel, no interior do Paraná, a 600 quilômetros da costa do litoral. Leandro Dora is a dad, coach. My dad. He's been a professional surfer, he did rock festivals, he did BMX, he did a lot of things. He had a restaurant, so he's done all sorts of stuff. He, he knows how to do anything. I think this transition from surfist to trainer was happening very naturally. Our group of Pontal do Sul was a group of people um pouco diferente do surf daquela época. A galera era um pouco mais punk, gostava de música punk rock, de hardcore, era... And he is still in a band, I guess. He loves punk rock. <laughs> o, o Iago, o Lucas Silveira, eles eram bem novos quando eu comecei esse trabalho de coach. E posteriormente vieram outros atletas fazer parte do grupo, né? O Ian Gouveia e posteriormente o Ricardo dos Santos, né? Eu acho que ele é um marco na, no meu desenvolvimento da minha carreira como treinador, porque o Ricardinho foi o primeiro atleta profissional e ele influenciou bastante o Adriano a vir me procurar. Whatever he did with Iago, Adriano, it definitely works. E a gente, né, juntos a gente conquistou esse título e foi um marco muito grande na minha carreira. Ele também se tornou um treinador. E ele também aplica a metodologia da Primori Surf, então isso me deixa bastante feliz. He has his own coaching company, which is a Primori Surf. It's good to see the professionals improve. Like for example, Jack, he's been watching Jack for for a really long time. Começamos a conviver mais ainda com o Jack e essa época eu tava só com o Iago e aí perguntei pro Iago o que ele achava, ele pô, vamos nessa, né? Já era uma pessoa que se identificava com a gente, o jeito dele when Jack asked him to work with him, he already knew everything Jack needed to, to get better. O Jack, a gente aumentou muito o volume das pranchas dele, a gente mudou a forma física dele, a maneira com que ele se alimentava. E logo depois do início do trabalho, logo na primeira etapa que nós estávamos junto, que foi no México, em Barra de la Cruz, ele venceu, então... Just like that, like, next event, he, he won the event. Eu também tive sorte com isso, porque todo mundo fala, ah, você começou a trabalhar com o cara, o cara ganhou o campeonato. Mas é, o Jack era um cara que ele, a gente sabe, é, eu acho que o, o principal trabalho de um surf coach é, primeiramente, identificar os problemas, né? Identificar onde estão as falhas e de que maneira você pode corrigir elas, né? The first things that we were talking about is about, like, literally, like, athlete stuff, you know, that I never really paid attention to. And then he asked for 
cup of water and I get in half that cold. It's like, I just see a problem right here. There's no water in your home. His main thing, he, he lives for it. He, he breathes surfing, he wakes up and he sees a shitty wave and he says it's epic. So he's always, he's always seeing something. Yago started surfing when he was like 11 or 12, super late. He was always losing in the amateur events. If you see now, Yago is he's surfing just perfect, you know? Porque fisicamente, mentalmente, eu acho que o Iago está bem preparado. É esse ajuste de estar com a prancha grande no pé e realizar um surf de qualidade. And I always knew he was one of the greatest coach of all time. It's so natural to us to like know what moment he's he's being my my dad and he's giving me fatherly advice or or he's giving me a coach advice. I can like tell when when he switches into coach mode and and he knows when I'm being his son or. His athletes. É, é até um ponto muito importante que eu, assim que eu comecei o trabalho com o Matheus, falei, nós vamos ficar a temporada inteira no Hawaii. É um investimento necessário. He told me straight away to spend a lot of time on, in Hawaii, not just Hawaii, but you know, bigger ways. Hawaii, você tem tudo. Você tem muitas ondas, muita qualidade. É, o trabalho, o trabalho para o Hawaii, ele é construído no nosso dia a dia durante o ano todo, né? It's not a good time of waves back home right now. It's summer, it's really small, it's too easy to get lost and go party and, and then here you, you have to push yourself. E o Hawaii você tem todas as condições. Você tem desde o meio metro com vento, como hoje, até o 20 pés que vai ser depois da manhã. Então é, é, você tem que estar pronto para tudo, né? Eu acho que depois que ele está aqui há 15 dias, 20 dias, um mês, ele começa a pisar diferente na prancha. O surf ganha uma maturidade, uma firmeza muito diferente de qualquer outro lugar do mundo. You don't have this in Brazil, man. You need this. It's different and, and powerful. To be humble and to accept your, your place here and to try to work on that, I think that's, that's really important. You're, you're just another guy. You're not, you're not like the king of your city. You're, you're just here like trying to battle it out with 200 other incredible surfers. Thanks for watching episode one of Stab and Vans The Pickup. Tune in every Thursday in January as we cover the 2023 Vans Triple Crown of Surfing along with a variety of other competitive and cultural happenings. There just happens to be a magnificent trophy sitting next to us, which is for the winner of the Vans Digital Triple Crown. As well as a seed into the 2023 Vans High Masters. So, no big deal. I mean, you want that. So be sure to register by December 23rd, 2022. We'll leave you this week with a teaser for what's to come with Stab Surfer of the Year through the picks from Momentum Generation Heartthrob, Big Wave Revolutionary, and Father to the Future, Shane Dorian. Any last words, Dylan? Meli Kalikimaka. I'd have to go Felipe. Just was so fun to see him win a world title and he's just rock solid all year. I'd say Ethan Ewing, number two. In 2022, he became almost everybody's favorite surfer. Kale Walsh, that edit that Kale put out had such a huge impact. Yeah, I'd go Griffin Colapinto, number four. That shit he was doing in Portugal, that backside error. I definitely think he should be in the top five. Fifth, I'll go with Nathan Florence. Every surfer just wants to get barreled and he gets barreled more than anyone on earth right now. Women, number one, Stephanie Gilmore, come from behind to win the world title. Number two, Carissa Moore for sure. She was just super dominant in 2022. Third, I would say Katie Simmers. People coming up want to surf like her. She's the kind of surfer you use to set to as an example for like younger kids. Number four, I would say Sierra Kerr. Just the air that she did in at Lakey Peak and Stab High was so far beyond any other air I've ever seen a woman do. Number five, I'd probably have to go with Erin, Erin Brooks. Her work ethic is ridiculous. Top male junior, I'd probably say Huey Vaughn. I just like him as a kid. He's a really cool kid. He's really funny, has great energy. His commitment to errors, his creativity. Women, I'll have to go with Katie. She'll like just blow past a section and just do a big old roundhouse. So she looks like she's never talked to a judge in her life, which is like really refreshing and fun to watch. 
Top edit, Kale Walsh, for sure. Commitment level is just so, like, 10 out of 10. Best YouTube channel, I'd say Mason Ho. He just does exactly what he wants, and I just love him as a human, and love him as a personality, and I love the way he thinks. Best film of the year, I'd say the Colapinto Brothers, DNA. I love when you see films where you feel like you really got to know somebody at the end. You, like, really, like, know them a lot more than you did at the start. And I just didn't have any time to watch longer, longer surf films, so I didn't really watch anything else on the list.